In the world of Fallout 4, there exists a numerous amount of weapons, both weak and strong. But due to the ability to extensively modify weapons, even the weakest ones can be made into something special without having to put in too much work. That being said, I'll be completely honest, I don't really have anything else to segue with, so... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frost, and this is the Fallout 4 Baseball Bat Challenge Run. Now, before we get into things, I will once again start the video off with a brief explanation of what will be taking place. You should know the drill by now. If you don't want to listen to me talk, then get out. Alternatively, if you just want to skip the explanation, then go to the time shown at the bottom of the screen. During this run, I can only damage enemies with a baseball bat. You should also note, there are several different types of bats in the game, but most of the difference just comes from their color or the material they're made out of, making them all usable. We should also discuss weapon modifications and the results that go along with them. If this was a pipe pistol run, then any modification that changes the base name of the gun into something else would not be allowed, such as converting it into a pipe rifle or revolver. But since all the modifications that can be done to a bat do not change the base name, and leave it as just a baseball bat, mods will be allowed. Thankfully, there are no major hindrances in this run that can potentially ruin it. Like in Skyrim, when you have to damage Parthenax with a shout in order to continue the main story. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's move on to the run. Because this is a baseball bat run, I needed to focus my special points into strength and endurance to maximize my melee ability. Here's the rundown of all my points. I put 7 into strength, 1 into perception because it's useless for this run, 7 into endurance, 1 into charisma because speech checks hardly do anything in this game, 3 into intelligence because why not, 6 into agility for a little more action points, and 3 into luck because it boosts your charge for critical hits. After that, I gave myself a name befitting of a baseball bat, then someone must have gotten a 25 kill streak because I heard on the news that a tactical nuke was incoming. We ran to the safety of the vault, just narrowly missed the holy embrace of Adam, proceeded further into the vault to be processed, and then just like Master Chief on several occasions, succumbed to cryogenic slumber. When I awoke, nothing too exciting happened. Life got whacked, baby got stolen, you know, the usual. I escaped the pod, bobbed and weaved my way through the rad roaches, locking them behind doors, and went straight to the pip boy. But apparently, the game didn't like the fact that I ignored the rad roaches, because it practically shoved one down my throat. I circled back around, locked it behind a door again, and finally got my hands on the pit boy I unlocked the vault door, then rose to the surface and took a gander at what happened to my home. I'll state here that I take most of my gameplay from live streams that I do, and in this one, the stream was running like absolute garbage, and I didn't notice. For the first few minutes, the gameplay here will be very PowerPoint presentation-y, and I apologize for that. I did some stuff to correct it a little later, and it will smooth out, so just bear with me for the time being. Anyway, let's try and run through this as quickly as possible so the terrible frame rate doesn't give you an epileptic seizure. I talked to Codsworth, found dog meat, and skipped over Concord to make my way immediately to the heart of Boston and enter Diamond City. For those of you who have never been to Fenway Park, I can confirm it does not have this behemoth of a gate in front of it. And although Wally is nowhere to be found, Bethesda did put in the green monster, which I do appreciate. Go Red Sox. Now the reason I traversed the commonwealth without a weapon was simple. The easiest place for me to find a weapon was here. In Diamond City, there is a trader who you can hear from almost any corner of the stadium frantically shouting about buying a swatta in a stereotypical Bostonian accent. Well, for the first time in my life, I actually approached him and bought a swatter, along with an appropriate outfit. Now I could finally engage in combat. I returned to Concord to help out Preston, and the bat actually didn't suck. It did a decent amount of damage and took down most raiders in two to three hits. The challenging part, however, is that this is Fallout, not Skyrim, and 90% of the enemies are equipped with firearms. And I have a bat. I'll let you do the math on that one. On top of that, the enemies that do have melee weapons block very frequently, making it nearly impossible to damage them when I'm not in vats. So stim packs are going to be your best friend here. I swatted my way through the raiders, met up with Preston, found the crashed vertebrate on the roof, and proceeded to smash raiders with my rusty Hulkbuster armor. Then came the Deathclaw, a true test of my bat swinging ability. And again, I was pleasantly surprised at how quickly I was able to take down the Deathclaw. 
This run was looking promising. I already decided I was siding with the Brotherhood of Steel for this run, because I wanted the power armor. So, after helping the Minutemen, I set out to join the Brotherhood. I helped Paladin Dance clear the ghouls, went with him to Arc Jet Systems, cooked him alive, found the Deep Range Transmitter, and was admitted to their ranks as an initiate. I helped Scribe Halen and Knight Reese, then was sent to find the remains of the missing recon team. This is where I encountered the first real challenge of the challenge run. To find the third missing member of the recon team, you have to go to the Revere Satellite Array, which is overflowing with super mutants. And for some reason, although I was only about level 7 and playing on normal, the game decided to spawn a ridiculous amount of high level super mutants, including a legendary, several butchers, several brutes, and a suicider. And if you recall, I am only using a bat. So when a super mutant runs at me, mini nuke in hand, well, that is not a preferable situation. I can't remember if this area was always this difficult or if I just got extremely unlucky, but it's what I was stuck with, so I had to deal with it. Somehow, even at point blank range, the suicider didn't kill me. But after dying several times to the other super mutants, I just avoided the lot of them and ran straight to the dead recon team member to get what I needed from his corpse. The super mutants that got in my way got bonked, and I retreated from the area, ready to fight another day. Finally, I found Brandis, and then returned to dance with my report, and finished the Brotherhood questline for now. Next on my list was to get a better bat before continuing the main story, and thankfully for me, there exists a very special bat in this game, the 2076 World Series Bat which has a 6% chance to send enemies flying away with an epic home run hit. The only problem is that it's located deep in Jamaica Plains, and there are a lot of ghouls in Jamaica Plains. A lot of ghouls. Like a staggering amount of ghouls. But after a lot of running and screaming, I finally killed them all and was able to get into the town hall's basement. I would like you all to acknowledge the amount of security here for a baseball bat, it better be worth it. Thankfully, the security was easily bypassed with a mayoral ID that I found, but these two Protectron Guardians did give me a run for my money when they liquefied my internal organs with a blast of concentrated energy. My next attempt, I just ran past them and sealed the door, found the bat, then ran past them again. The treasure of Jamaica Plains was finally mine. Now, it was at this point I was made aware of the crappy stream quality, but I'd been streaming for nearly six hours, so I just signed off for the night and planned to fix it the next day. Instead of fixing it though, I decided to just do the lazy thing and record the game instead, which took a bunch of stress off my CPU and captured the game much better. Unfortunately, you won't see my beautiful face for now, because I just didn't feel like keeping up my appearance and left the camera turned off. Now if you don't know already, Fallout is my favorite game franchise. Always has been, always will be. But I hadn't played Fallout in quite some time. Quite frankly, because the abomination that is Fallout 76 ruined my whole vibe when it came to Fallout. But I think it's been long enough that the bad taste in my mouth has subsided, and Bethesda has done some stuff to correct their mistakes. Like adding NPCs to a Fallout game. I'll just let that sink in. All jokes aside, I think they've been scrutinized quite enough, and with Microsoft's recent acquisition of their studio, I can only hope they've learned from their mistakes and have nothing but a bright future ahead. Okay, that was a bit of a tangent. Where was I going with that? Oh, oh yeah, so I haven't played a Fallout game in a while because of what was previously established, and I forgot how much I loved the Fallout universe. So instead of playing through the main story, I decided to just enjoy Fallout 4 for a day, without recording. I did some side quests, got Kate as a follower, and just built some stuff. And yes, I used the bat the whole time. If you've seen my Skyrim video, you should know that I fully commit myself to these runs for some reason. Now that we're caught up, we can resume the main story. I went back to Diamond City, talked to Ellie, who asked me to go find Detective Nick Valentine. I went and found Nick, and then we were confronted by Skinny Malone. And that's when I saw her, Darla. A badass chick carrying a baseball bat. And I was carrying a baseball bat. It was like a match made in heaven. And with my level 1 charisma, I somehow managed to pass the speech check with her, and together we caved Skinny Malone's fat f***ing head in. 
Then, like all the women in my life, she walked out on me without a word. I accompanied Nikki back to Diamond City, gave Ellie the good news, and then sat down and explained my situation with the hopes that Nick could assist me with finding my son. Nick told me that a man named Kellogg could be the one responsible for bushwhacking my wife and taking my kid. So we went to investigate his house. We found his cigars, used dog meat to catch his scent, and took off to the Commonwealth to find him. I followed dog meat to Fort Hagen, found Frosted Flakes, swiftly beat him to death, saw the Pridwin in action, and then returned to Paladin Dance. We flew to the Pridwin via Vertibird, and Elder Maxon told me to clear out Fort Strong. I defeated the behemoth there with my bat, found the stockpile of fat man shells, returned to the Pridwin again, and was now tasked with finding my way into the Institute. So I went back to Nick, found Dr. Amari, went through Rice Krispies' memories, learned about Dr. Virgil, found Dr. Virgil, and was told that I needed to defeat a courser in order to get into the Institute. So I proceeded to Green Tech Genetics, fought through the gunners, killed the courser, killed the hostages, freed the synth, then killed her because no witnesses, and returned to Virgil once more with the courser chip. Then that big useless f**k told me I needed to get it decoded. So I went back to Boston, found the old North Church, found the railroad, got the chip decoded, then again returned to Virgil. He gave me the blueprints for the molecular relay. I went back to the Brotherhood of Steel, built the molecular relay, and finally made my way into the Institute. I found my son, who is actually a synth, then met father, who is my real son, who is the father of the synths. So I am the father of father, who is father of the synths, which technically makes me the father of father of father of synths. I recruited Dr. Lee, left the Institute, and then was informed by the future female Joe Swanson that I was needed to help reconstruct Liberty Prime, my favorite character in the Fallout universe. Now here is where I actually took the time to fix my stream settings to accommodate Fallout 4. So you'll notice that I am again back in the top corner, and hopefully the game is running much smoother now. Anyway, I built the electromagnetic actuators, ventured into the glowing sea to find the stockpile of Mark 28 nuclear bombs, found them, then returned to speak to Elder Maxon. He informed me that Paladin Dance was a synth this whole time, and went AWOL. I tracked him down, gave him a proper soldier's death, went back to the Pridwin to speak to Lancer Captain Kells, and he tasked me with destroying the railroad. I blindly followed his orders, went back to Proctor Swanson, and then had to go find the Beryllium Agitator for Liberty Prime. Now this part scared me. I thought my run was going to be ended here. To find the Beryllium Agitator, you need to get in this vertebrate and fly to the top of the Mass Fusion building. You have to mow down synths with the minigun to advance, which isn't a bat. Or so I thought. It turns out that if you just wait it out and shoot the gun around without hitting any synths, the vertebrate will eventually take too much damage and be forced to drop you off. So the run was saved. I found the beryllium agitator, returned to the Brotherhood again, and installed it in Liberty Prime. Then I activated him and was ready to take the fight to the Institute. I just fast traveled to the CIT ruins instead of following the Iron Giant across the Commonwealth. He blew a hole in the ground, the Brotherhood and I infiltrated the Institute, I said hi and then bye to father, planted the explosives on the reactor, and then beat Fallout 4 with only using a baseball bat. Now I procrastinated a lot during this playthrough. The total playtime when I beat the game was over 24 hours, but if you were to cut out all the unnecessary stuff and only count the main story gameplay, it took me about 10 hours to beat the game. This challenge was actually a lot of fun, and I played it on normal difficulty so it wasn't too bad, but also provided a decent challenge at certain points. If you're looking for a way to spice up Fallout 4, I would definitely recommend this challenge. If you have any ideas for a challenge you would like to see me do, make sure you let me know by putting it in the comments below. Join the Clutchcore Discord server by clicking the link in the description, and check out my other YouTube videos. With every fiber of my being, I thank you all for watching. And as always, this has been your Friendly Neighborhood Gamer Frost, signing off.